Hey, welcome to Excel Video 397. I'm Nate Moore. Worked on a couple projects over the past week where folks wanted clinical data out of the EHR system in some kind of report, whether it was a dashboard or an email or whatever, to make sure they were qualified for all the meaningful use or PQRS or whatever other incentives were out there. When you're ready to make sure you're getting every dollar you're entitled to out of these incentives, I'd love to help you with those reports. We're going to play a little bit more with tables today, and I want to show you a couple of things. Primarily how easy it is to add more data to tables. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say for whatever reason, and just to make this make a little bit more sense, I'm going to put some numbers up here. Let's say the goal is, and I'm not telling you how to run your practice, but let's say the goal is to collect half the patient balance due for every patient that comes in. Well, what's my goal? Well, my goal is equals this times 0.5. That's what I want to collect. And if I hit enter here, watch what Excel does. Excel says, oh, well, you probably want this same formula since it's in a table. You probably want it all the way down. So it just does it for you. I didn't even do my double click trick or anything. It just copied it down for me. And it gave this column a name. It called it column one because it didn't know any better. But what it's trying to do is put this as part of the table. So now I can sort and filter and do whatever I, think I want to do. I could get everything, you know, over 100 bucks or less than 50 or whatever. I can also come here and change this to... To uh, let's make it a capital T to collect. How's that? So I want to collect that. That's and we could do round. We could do a bunch of things. What I wanted to show you was how easy it is to just add another column to the table. All you've got to do is put a formula out here, and it just goes. If I came down to the bottom, and I've got some filters here, you can see I'm not quite at the bottom of my data. But if I came over here and let's just um, right click and insert a row. If I came here and put Nate, now Nate's a patient. And I'm going to make my appointment date 2-25-2015 just to make this the last date. So when I change my max formula, see how it picks up the data as I change? And it's I hope you can see this. It's a maybe I maybe we'll make this obnoxious. And we're going to get to this in just a, in just another video or two. But does that make it easier to see how that when I add in another row the shading stays? Maybe that's even easier to see how the shading stays. If you've gone through and shaded every row, every other row, whatever you're going to do, you got this pattern, everything's all fine, and then you got one more data to, row to add or something that's right in the middle, and you got to go reshade everything. No, 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 no. If you can add data to a table, if I added this, see how now it takes care of the shading for me, and here's Nate again or whatever. The shading happens as you add rows to the table, and I can come down along here. I can put here. My appointment happens to be at 9.40 a.m. just like this. In fact, we're going to cheat and copy all this stuff down there. I don't have any balance left to collect. Notice how my numbers change and update. How about we'll put some awful patient balance in there so you can see that I can add data and my formulas update as I go. It's really easy to add columns and rows to an existing table. Stay tuned next time. There's a couple more things I want to say about tables as we get just a little bit fancier in trying to maintain these things over time. Thanks for watching.